What's this nonsense about needing a password to see Lord Cardigan today? Relax. I've got it in my pocket. Look sharp, men. Allow no one past unless I authorize them. Cardigan has gone too far this time. I've a mind to contact Scotland Yard myself. Come now, gentlemen. I thought us united in opposition against this perfidious law. The Indians to me. Hiding. I smell trouble with a capital S. Stop that! Balaclava. Of course it bloody is.
Well, I don't believe in ghosts. Just need to get inside. No need for this. We did the best we could. It's wasted up all the time. Sergeant Freddie Aberline of Scotland Yard. Where might this scandalous activity be taking place? Oh, yes, yes. It's uh, just this way. Follow me, Sergeant, but discreetly, if you would. One doesn't like to be seen airing a fellow member of Parliament of dirty linen. What? <laughs> I'll be very discreet. Usually I would be in disguise, but my clothes all fell into the Thames. One of my favorite disguises is a very ancient old lady, modeled after my mother. You'd be surprised how convincing I am. A tough old bird she was. Actually had a facial hair problem. We'd sell the hair for dolls. Please let me know if I'm speaking too much. I am prone to flights of fancy.
You took a wrong turn! Oh, oh, oh. What shall I do? That crazy bird boy is here! I'm taking him out! Catch him! <laughs> 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 Should fall not on the glory fields of Crimea, but to an assassin's blade in the very halls of power. Are you finished yet? Take your bow, knave, for you have managed what no Russian battery, what no Indian tiger could achieve. Claim your trophy, and may you choke on it. Yes, but do tell me more about Balaclava. Farewell. Farewell, dear Britannia! Your dawn shall be dimmer that the Earl of Cardigan sees it not. God save the Queen and the Eleventh Hussars! What a prick. Apart from the death squad on our tail, apart from that. Backup's on the way. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? It's not your job to fight Templars. I had this colleague. He was our boss's son. I didn't much care for him at the start. Everyone treated him like he was so bloody special. To me, 
He just wasn't invested in, in, in anything that didn't affect him personally. But I was wrong about him. He became my friend, put himself through hell, and he saved us all in the end. So I reckon, well, I can't apologize to him, but I can, I don't know, I can try and live up to his example. You are a good assassin. Holy jeez! Hello. It has been too long. Galena! I mean, I have not seen you since we blew up that lab in Paris. Uh, there were many explosions, and you screamed like a baby. Bishop tells me Otzelberg is here. I will kill him for you. Super. Great news. Now, if you wouldn't mind keeping watch, I am going to lie down and die now. Rest. We have a big fight coming. Sean and Rebecca are safe for now, but we're still relying on you to find us that shroud. Order has bred disorder. The sea rises to flood the pubs and extinguish the street lamps. Our city will die. Tupinay has failed. Lucy has failed. Brudenell Elliotson. Pearl. All have gone into the night. It is up to me now. The assassins have brought nature's fury into our homes. Men have become monsters, barreling toward us, teeth out. Our civilization must survive this onslaught. To prevent a return of the Dark Ages, I will start anew. London must be reborn. The Peace of Eden is under Buckingham Palace. We've got all we need. Let's start planning our infiltration. Hold on. Better to get visual verification. If we're going to move, we need to be 100% sure. We'll only get one shot before Otso Burr crashes down on us. Gotta agree with Sean. We'll position ourselves near the palace, but we'll wait for you to sync the genetic data before we move. It's all up to you, Initiate.
You're late. Staric is making his move. The piece of Eden is somewhere inside Buckingham Palace. Let him have it. I've seen your handiwork across the city. Perhaps you should trust my judgment. I've been killing Staric's henchmen. What have you been doing? Let's ask Henry, shall we? I have been repairing your mistakes. Too much haste is too little speed. Don't you quote father at me. That's Plato. And I am sorry this doesn't involve anything you can destroy. Father was right, he never approved of your methods. Father is dead! Enough! I have just received word from my spies. At the palace ball tonight, Staric plans to steal the piece of Eden, and then eliminate all the heads of church and state. Once more for all time's sake. And then we're finished. Agreed. So what's the plan? Such an unexpected delight to visit you both. What is the news on the street? Mrs. Disraeli, we have discovered that there is something inside Buckingham Palace that could threaten the... <laughs> what my sister's failing to say is that we require entrance into the ball tonight. Impossible! Even if there were any invitation cards remaining, which there are not, uh, someone of your lowly station... If that damn fool Gladstone is attending this evening, they can have my card. Perfect. Then I'll go alone. Mrs. Disraeli, if you'd be kind enough to inform my darling brother of the location of the Gladstone's residence, perhaps he could use his considerable skills to commandeer their cards. <laughs> what fun! Did you hear that, Dizzy? We're going to pinch the Gladstone's invitations. Thank you for volunteering me, sweet sister. Oh, a pleasure, brother dearest. Now, Mrs. Disraeli, if you would excuse me, I must visit with the Maharaja. It occurs to me that he may have a second set of plans to a certain vault. Oh! <laughs> 
I haven't been quite as delicate as I could have been, but still... Walk on, girl. Mrs. Gladstone's under guard. Better be cautious. Better wait until she's alone. Now is my chance. should not attend the Queen's ball without making a proper entrance. For the invitations. What's this? Swords must be left at the door by order of the Queen. Freddy will know what to do.
Doing fine, girl. Keep moving. Steady on. What a carriage you got there. Where did you buy it, if, if you don't mind me asking? Ask all you want, Freddy. You'll never get an answer. Damn it all. Was it my eyebrows? Yes, and your face, voice, and body. Look, I've got an invitation to the Queen's Ball tonight. How did you come by that? Freddy, there's to be an attack on the ball. I need to smuggle some weapons inside to prevent it. Supposing I believe you? Only the Royal Guard carries weapons. So? Too easy. For God's sake, Freddy. Fine. I require a guard's uniform. Done. I knew you'd come through. Just promise me, Jacob, that you will return Mr. Gladstone's coach. Of course. Careful. Don't want to get blood on the uniform. Don't want to get blood on the uniform.
I don't require a reason to end your life. Charming. Now to hide the body.
Let's stir up some trouble. Freddy, here I come. Walk on, girl. That's a girl. <laughs> One uniform as requested. It's still warm. My gift to you? I will meet you on the roof of Buckingham Palace. You're such a romantic.
Delighted to see you again, Miss Fry. Your Highness, the plans detailing the renovations to Buckingham Palace have gone astray. I suppose you will have to make do with the copies. There are copies? Where? Uh, not so fast. First, I have a matter of some urgency. Carrying out my plan would require stealth and speed, qualities I know you possess. Time is of the essence, Your Highness. Then make this quick, my dear. The most influential men in Parliament remain beyond my reach. But these very men have sent for carriages to prepare for the ball tonight. Acquire an official carriage, and we shall drive the politicians to their destinations. Along the way, I will meet with them. And afterward, I shall tell you where to find the plans. You're a shrewd negotiator. One must be when one is so often underestimated. Don't allow personal feelings to compromise the mission. What a mistake. I need your skills. What's your name? With them. You can't be here. you're doing. Now. Lobby our cause, Miss Fry. Climb up, Your Highness. Where are we headed? Belgrave Square. Whoa! 
Turret station, please, and on the double. My Move son is anticipating my arrival. Welcome, sir. Your Highness, what a surprise. <laughs> is life not about embracing the unexpected? I shall take but a few moments of your time. Make me proud. A matter of utmost importance must be discussed. When the Commonwealth seized the Punjab from my people, it was not a seizure, but a rightful transaction. Britain promised to protect me. By robbing me of my kingdom, Parliament acted in violation of the treaty signed with my family. Here, read it. I... I was not aware. Read. That is all I ask. You are one of the few in a position to help. I will do what I can. Thank you, sir. That's it. I trust you and your son will enjoy the ball this evening. He is newly returned from Delhi. I will share what we have discussed. It is most disconcerting. Girl. That proved quite valuable. Where to now? St. James's Park. I noticed Mr. Green did not accompany you. He has other things to attend to. Ah, a pity. You two seem to get along nicely. Well, that was a problem, you see. One must not allow our personal feelings to compromise one's mission. That sounds like a quotation. It is. From my father. Ethan Fry. You knew him? No, unfortunately. But Mr. Green spoke of him. He sounded like an extraordinary man. He was, Your Highness. And your mother as well. Cecily Fry. She and your father were partners, inseparable. The only duo that came close to challenging Mr. Starrett. And very much in love, at least from the small amount I have been told. Cecily. I wish I could have met her. From what Mr. Green gathered, you share much in common. Your intelligence, for one. Father never spoke of her. What would Mr. Green do? He was only a boy when he trained with my father. Children can be quite perceptive, Miss Fry. Yes, sir. Good day, sir. Why, what are you doing here, Your Highness? I know how busy your days have been of late. A few moments of your time is all I require. This is all rather unorthodox, but continue. Britain was to protect me according to the treaty my family signed. Instead, she took my land. And now I hear Britain intends to strengthen her ties to India. Perhaps it is time to return the Punjab to her people. The Queen has supplied you with an annual income for God knows how long, and now you invite the hand that feeds you? It is not a matter of money. I cannot stand idle and watch my homeland subjected to the yoke of an outsider's rule. My people are treated good day, sir. May God bless you. Only one more remains, to the Gladstone residence. Do you miss India? I remember that my mother smelled of cinnamon. And when she cradled me in her arms in the summer heat, I would hold so still that she fell asleep. When I lost my kingdom, it hurt. For truly, when they took my mother away, I saw her again two years before she died. The summer long... Good day, Mr. Gladstone. 
Mr. Singh. You are a hard man to pin down. I know what this is about. Your politics have worn off. Your Majesty is tired of you. So now you come begging for scraps. You wound me deeply, sir. My people deserve freedom. I am here to fight for them. Why did you lose the Punjab? I shall tell you, Your Highness. You were outgunned, outmaneuvered, and simply outclassed. Yes, the Sikhs deserve freedom. I hope with British help and progress, they shall achieve it. Then why do they cry out for their king? Britain has a duty to bring about peace. It is an enormous responsibility. And I value your guidance and advice, along with that of Parliament. But it's our burden to rule India, and certainly not the duty of a forgotten leader who has not seen his country for 20 years. I apologize for being so frank, but one must not tell lies to a king. Much luck, Your Highness, with your lobbying. I hope my advice has done some good. Far more than your policies thus far. But I hold out hope that you will make progress. My people are counting on it. Thank you, Miss Fry, for forwarding my cause. Oh, you are welcome. I hope some good comes of it, despite Mr. Glass. Those of us with the largest hearts protect them the most. Your father, for instance. From what I understand, he was extraordinarily sad. Broken, even, after your mother's passing. That kind of pain can blind us. Cause us to say outlandish things to protect the ones we love. It's time you returned this carriage and recovered those plans. They are located in Buckingham Palace. The Queen keeps them among her personal papers in the white drawing room. I wish you a good evening. Miss Evie Fry. And to you, Your Highness. Still keeping well, Miss. Good on you. Girl. A little the worse for wear. There you go. You can't run forever.
Should help you greatly. Of course he'd arrive in that. Miss Fry? Hand him your weapons. We must enter an armed. Go on in, sir and madam. Dear man, I am soon to become prime minister. What in the blazes is our carriage doing here? Did I hear something? No. And yet, they are so much more pleasant than Charming. yours. Charming. Aren't I? I shall go and find the piece of Eden. As you wish. I'm off to meet Freddy. The plans are located in the white drawing room, which is most likely locked. The captain of the guard will have a key. Closed, and this will be over before you know it. Who are you? More trouble from the rabble, I expect. That hurts. <laughs> Pleasant dreams.
You are going to escort me. Keep your mouth closed, and this will be over before you know it. Who are you? That is interesting. It's safe over here. You're not supposed to be here. My arm. What the hell is that? Feeling something. It's some sort of commotion. My arm. My arm. That hurts. Go on. me. My arm. No, no, she's not there anymore. That hurts. The lady is with me. Much obliged. Madam? That hurts. Gentle. My arm. Gentle. I don't want to hurt you. Walk. The plans are somewhere near. Now for the vault. <laughs> 